What's good, everybody? Sam Boy, Sam Boy Reacts. And today we're going to be looking at the internet breaking rapper, according to the Associated Press, uh, Tom McDonald. Uh, he recently purchased Eminem's $100,000 NFT or non fungible token, Beat, and uses it to make his new single and video, Dear Slim. Now, for those that don't already know who Tom McDonald is, you know, truth be told, he has, uh, you know, broken the internet on many occasions. He's a rapper, internet rapper, white guy, obviously, and his whole angle is he basically represents the aggrieved white male of 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 America, and that's really been, you know, uh, gotten in the spotlight in several years, uh, you know, really since like the Obama presidency, but also especially during like the post-Trump uh, presidency, and using rap and using very contemporary styles of rap, he, you know, in terms of, of, of dress and the, you know, the production and the flow to certain degrees, he is basically like a, a propagandist for that shit. And is going to be, you know, saying, taking on the aesthetics of a lot of modernized, you know, of, of, of hip hop and rap and using it to, you know, basically gentrify it in the worst possible terms. He's basically doing all the shit that people were afraid Eminem would do. Um, you know, but Eminem completely went in the other direction. He's only gotten more woke and progressive in, you know what I'm saying? Not so much in his music, but at least in his his real life, uh, how he actually leads and how, you know, he's, you know, him shit talking Trump and going viral for that. So let's see what uh, what Associated Press has to say in this article. Oops, let me just go down. I have a touch screen here. So this is released uh, from Los Angeles, May 14th, 2021. So that was not too long ago. So here's what we got. Asserting himself as one of the biggest underground artists in the world with over half a billion YouTube views, hundreds of millions of streams, and over 100,000 albums sold exclusively on CD directly to fans. You read that right. Tom McDonald once again shocks the system with his new single, Dear Slim. Recently, he's made headlines for purchasing Eminem's new original beat, Stan's Revenge, as an NFT or non-fungible token for $100,000. As a lifelong Stan himself, impossible heir to Shady's public enemy number one persona, uh, he rapped over what uh, he rapped over that beat for Dear Slim. The video picks up where Eminem's stand video left off. Tom not only embodies Eminem's most iconic character, but he also writes a stark letter to Slim in the visual. It's complete with Stan's Monte Carlo now soaking wet and covered in seaweed from the climax of the original clip when he drove it off a bridge into a river 21 years ago. And um, so we're going to listen to the video. We're going to watch the video. But also, um, a little more backstory on Tom McDonald, and, and we'll bring up these other clips as well, is that his other, song, his other songs, like I said, he's, his whole thing is about the aggrieved white male and talking about how it's so hard to be a white man and, and you, you know, saying just focusing on white male victimhood, right? You know, saying, and, 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 <laughs> and in that same vein, he's, you know, drawn these false comparisons between like Black Lives Matter and you know, Ku Klux Klan or other white identity, you know, white extremist movements. He, he's one of those motherfuckers. And, um, you know, he's, he's, you know, claiming that white people are experiencing, you know, saying, um, you know, more racism, you know, than others. And I am somebody who definitely thinks that white people can experience racism. Um, you know, they can be, you know, people can exercise prejudice and bigotry towards them. And just because somebody's white doesn't mean that they are give, assigned all of the privileges that people associate with them. Uh, it's a select number of white people who benefit from this shit. And there are plenty of non-white people or, and non-white men whom uh, the system is working well for them. And they're more than happy to pull up the ladder behind them. So, uh, But we are going to be cringing with, Tim, with Tom McDonald, I'm sure, on this, as well as his other videos. So let's go ahead and get into that. Dear Slim, I thought you might have heard of me maybe Cause lately everywhere I turn someone's comparing us crazy I never would have thought when I was bumping Biggie and Pac That I would buy bleach in a box and become the product of shade but Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this right here So <laughs> And see, this is it's, it <laughs> Hold on, let me go back to this article Let me go back to this article real quick He wrapped up a piece of the video put up things. He embodies but he also writes a star letter he completes as a lifelong saying himself impossible heir 
to Shady's public enemy number one persona he rapped over that beat for. See, here's the thing that fucking annoys me is that they're giving this fool too much credit. Nobody is, nobody, there is nobody that is putting him in the same category as Eminem. Not on, you know, saying terms of his rapping capability, of his actual history, where he comes from. Um, nobody is validating him. Nobody is co-signing him. The only people that give a fuck about what he has to say are either people that are reacting negatively or at least cringing to, to, to most of his shit or, and calling out his, his, you know, his delusions of grandiosity. Or did the other aggrieved white people or just, you know, people, whatever, who, who think that white people are experiencing the most amount of racism, who think that it's impossible to be a white person, especially a straight white male these days. And um, that who cares about him, the whole of hip hop and rap, um, you know what I'm saying, does not include the, you know, over half a billion YouTube views that he has in the in the hundreds of millions of streams and shit. Not going to say that his shit, he's not tapping into something, but the audience that he's feeding is not um, a multicultural one. It's not one, um, you know, because even for rap, even, this, you know, even though that it's mostly black people whom, you know, validate it, um, you know, a lot of the street shit, you know, it can be expressed and performed and, and done well in different ways by everybody around the world. By anybody of any background, but this shit, you, you only, you, there's only one philosophy, only one background that you could come from in order to stand behind this kind of shit. So yeah, but let's continue on with this, with this. Let's keep cringing with Tim, with Tom, Tim, Tom. But I'm here now. Hi, my name is Tom McDonald. That I would buy bleach in a box and become the product of shade. But I'm here now. Hi, my name is Tom McDonald. People call me controversial. I'm the one that counterculture follows. Every song I drop's a problem. I offend an awful lot with topics commenting on race and politics. I'm pretty awesome. Dear. Sl <laughs> he he's 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 the edge lord without the edge eminem was saying super vulgar things and challenging a lot of you know cultural norms and standards and whatnot but he was also calling out hypocrisies and, um within the culture you know like the video he did with with Marilyn, the song he did the, the video he did um for um I am what I, I am what I say I am and which featured Marilyn Manson whom as it will come to find out he was a scumbag in certain ways but as far as inspiring shit like shootings and inspiring like murders and suicides and and, and stuff like that um it was way it was way overblown it was it was the same scare of you know the devil infiltrating influencing culture through through music and everything that was attached to a lot of like heavy metal and hard rock music and just a lot of you know cultural expressions that that when it gets the mainstream or really that were just youth driven because oftentimes whatever the youth happens to be doing is going to be different than what people are that are you know at any stage in adulthood are doing and there's going to be clashes there but himself you know patting himself on the back like of course self aggregate you know bigging up yourself is is you know part and parcel of, of hip-hop and shit but i oh i start controversy with my political and comment in social commentary in my in my in my raps i'm pretty awesome that's just jesus fucking christ that's just corny as fuck this is why i'm saying you got to pay attention to like people throw numbers in front as, as if like numbers is self validation it's like who do these numbers represent because they surely don't represent uh uh the way that most other people in hip-hop are talking about or how they're speaking or how they're um you know, see themselves fitting within the culture or the influence of it. I know we're very different politically. Topics commenting on race and politics, I'm pretty awesome. Dear Slim, I know we're very different politically. Seems like some of your biggest fans are the victims I'm triggering. They're convinced I don't like you, which ain't consistent with history. I was picked on as a kid and they don't know what Slim did for me. But I'm here now and I fight the system just like you. Was addicted to pills and liquor and quit them just like you. People claim that you hate me, but Marshall, that can't be right, dude. You'd have to hate yourself as well as Marshall. I'm you, Mar <laughs> so i can tell that the hook is about to come through the hook is about to happen and i'm really not looking forward to it but before we dive off of that clip off of that cliff you see him trying to draw these very shallow comparisons between him and eminem because as i mentioned before eminem has been um as far as his his you know the rap he, he's not as crude and not as vulgar but he's still um you know he still does the edgy thing and still does the you know spatula crapula matula stable you know manapula um you know, same type of thing, but, um, you know, he's not nearly as vulgar and his views, his actual political and social cultural views are actually more in line with, uh, more quote unquote liberal or left-wing mainstream opinions, say a lot of the mainstream in general, because liberal values are way more predominant. And I don't know if Tom is still addicted to those drugs, if he's still using them, um, or not, if he's completely sober, but 
So this is this is the shit on addiction or to say that, you know, people don't get bullied for being white or in, in addition to having other features and whatnot. Um, and I'm not and I'm not, you know, here to be like, oh, Tom, stop whining. And, and, you know, you didn't go through anything or shut the fuck up. But it's like understanding that you're not the only one and understanding that there's levels of abuse, you know, what I'm saying and disenfranchisement and for the ways in which you you know, saying maybe fucked over. It's like, look at, you know, some people are getting it five, six, 10 times fold. You know what I'm saying? And that needs to be taken into account. That's what's so frustrating about him because it's like, you know, you get glimpses and hints that he's a real person and he has his own bullshit, but it's just been misinterpreted in such a negative and, and toxic way. But, uh, but yeah, but these shallow comparisons to, you know, what, Eminem has separated himself from what he used to be and what he is now and saying that like, hey, I was at the same point. So you can't you can't criticize me now or, or say that we're not alike because I was once in a similar position as you are. But it's not about where you came from. It's about where you're at and where you're going. And you all, you know, so far, you know, especially Eminem being the older person here, he has set a new trajectory for himself and he's been on that for quite a while. You, you know, say I'm 32 years old. I think dude is a little younger than me. But, you know, he still has time to change. But the trajectory he's on is um, completely different because because Eminem never came in as much as he was talking about his fucked up situation. He never pitted it as in like, oh, everybody's just bullying me. It was no people are fucked up because they see a white guy that's been accepted by the black community. And they're kind of looking at everybody else to kind of be like, yo, why? Why do y'all fuck with him and shit? And, and they're just, and we're just like we do. But he doesn't have again. He doesn't have the same cosigns because he's arguing from a different perspective. He's internalized that shit so much. You hate me, but Marshall, that can't be right, dude. You'd have to hate yourself as well as Marshall. I'm you. Marshall, remember back when you became Eminem. You changed the world with a pen. Well, now I'm just like you. I don't give a what, saying what I want with my fingers up. Everybody triggered and they think I suck. But I don't give a what, nah, 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 nah. I don't give a what, nah, 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 Wait, does this, wait, does he not cuss? I don't give a what, nah, 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 nah. Is this like, I wonder if this dude used to be like, I wonder if he used to be like a Christian rapper. And that shit wasn't catching on, so he's trying to find, so now he's trying to like pivot and still keep that like, oh, I don't cuss. Um, or if he's just trying to, because he's playing into the white angst, uh, uh, white anxieties, that he wants to separate it from the other you know, forms of rap that are that are very much coded in in blackness or, um, you know, at least in that periphery of understanding the black perspective uh, within hip hop. But either way, that's I, I, I just got to ask that question because I don't we're going to check out his other songs. Later. Slim. I thought that maybe because you paved the way for me You might relate to weight that Caucasian rappers are carrying They're constantly comparing us to you, it's embarrassing Never gaining their approval, it's just hate we're inheriting But I'm here now, go ahead and hate it, don't hurt Call me culture vulture garbage, those are ignorant words I kill a vulture, cook the poultry in a pan till it's burnt Yeah, hold, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second So, yes, this culture vulture, is culture vulture a term that gets thrown around, I think, um you know, all too often. A lot of times it's coding for you don't belong here, especially to white people that, that you know what I'm saying, uh, interact with, with, with the culture and whatnot, right? People like Adam22 of Vlad TV, um, you know what I'm saying? That was a that for a time, that was what people were saying about Eminem. Some people still say that about Eminem. Uh, I do think that it's a term that can be overused because I don't look at, I you know, I don't look at it any, any type of like culture or practice or anything as being like, uh, sacrosanct or that it's closed off from other people who genuinely want to be a part of it and that understand it and that there's going to be growing pains in the helping people understand the different nuances of everybody in different lifestyles. Hell, it's not, you know, there's plenty of misunderstanding between black people of the same class and backgrounds, um, you know, and those of different classes and backgrounds. So, you know, yeah, do I think it gets, do I think there's a little too much gatekeeping sometimes? Yes. But, and I don't necessarily think that Tom McDonald is is even a culture vulture i think he's you know true and honest in what his opinions are but that you know yeah some of the people who are criticizing him are just fucking idiots there's too woke and but that he's also just kind of misinterpreting people on purpose uh because of the opinions that he expresses and he doesn't want to accept that uh that there's another side to it or that his shit is not maybe as valid um or doesn't have the same weight as others 
Uh, so that may be the, may be the issue here. But yeah, but when he says that, like, oh, I took the, you know, people call me culture vulture. So then I took the poultry and I cooked it and ate it. It's like, well, wait a second. They're saying that you're the vulture. They're saying that you're the vulture over hip hop and rap. Like you don't like you're just here to feast off of it and eat off of it, but not actually giving a fuck about it or not actually belonging, you know, saying in that space. Like I said, I'm not going to necessarily say that Tom doesn't belong in this space. It may be an opinion that's that, you know, that I don't identify with, that I don't fuck with, but I don't necessarily think that he should be, um, you know, not be able to participate and make his contributions as he is doing. But yeah, but that analogy doesn't make sense because in that analogy, if you're being called the culture version, so you're saying that you killed yourself or that you're killing this persona of Tom McDonald, you're going to leave it behind? I mean, I could see that in the metaphorical poetic sense, but that's not what you're alluding to at all. You think that's just, he thinks he's snapping back. He thinks, he thinks this is a clap back. People call me culture vulture, but I'm going to cook the fucking vulture. I mean, the only way in which that analogy works is if the culture is the accusation that he's a culture vulture, but it's, oh my God, I'm giving this nigga too much credit. Let's, let's move the fuck. Actually, no, sorry. I'm giving this man too much credit. He's, I don't... I don't have a problem, you know, saying bestowing certain people, non-black people, uh, 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 you know, calling them niggas. But Tom McDonald is not one of them. So let's move on. Uh, let's move on. The vulture now, go ahead and hate it. Don't hurt. Call me culture vulture garbage. Those are ignorant words. I kill a vulture, cook the poultry in a pan till it's burnt. See, Marshall, I'm just like you. I'm flipping the bird. Dear Slim, I just want to give you your flowers. I spent hours memorizing all of your songs in 2000. You were the reason I screamed at all of my teachers. A teen, I needed your CD on repeat and shady space on my t-shirt. But I'm here now. They call me controversial just like you. We're both white, both rat, both of our eyes blue. Screw any guy. Again, the very superficial comparisons. Oh, they call us controversial for the things that we say. The stuff that you're saying is completely different. Eminem never came out of his mouth at any at any time period to say that uh, black people are, um, you know, not giving him fair credit or that uh, culture, rap and hip hop as a whole is not accepting him um, or that, you know, black culture as a whole is, is you know, seem very racist towards white people and shit, which I mean, the thing is, there is an element of that. I do think that marginalized people can be prejudiced, you know, seeing as those who are perceived to be in the, in the, in the, you know, privileged position and that it's done so without any rhyme or reason. It's just a matter, it's just a, a, a like a coping mechanism, um, you know, and he's never dissed like any major social or cultural movements um, and whatnot even though he hasn't fully embraced like every facet of like progressivism and wokeism. And I don't either. Um, I don't think anybody should have to, but, but, but yeah, but he, no, he doesn't do that. So at, at no point in his career has he ever done that. Oh, you know, we look the same again, playing off of the white identity elements and the slight, um, you know, the controversy. Who tries to say you changed and don't like you. Cause in my mind it's still 99 and I'm you. Marshall remember back when you Change the world with a pen. Well, now I'm just like you. I don't give a what, saying what I want with my fingers up. Everybody triggered and they think I suck. But I don't give a what, nan, 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 nan. Triggered. I don't give a what, nan, 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 I'm triggered. I'm triggered, Bobby, please. I'm triggered. Tom McDonald spitting straight facts. We're all wrong. Whether you love me or hate me or think I'm crazy Dropped a hundred grand to get a beat from Shady I really hope when I bought it he wasn't angry But I really had to tell him that he changed me The truth of the matter is without you Marshall Mathers I would have committed suicide before I was a rapper You showed me that I could do it I didn't need to be black or I know it's stupid But I just had to do my best to say thank you Okay, so I'm not even going to finish watching that Because I don't want to hear this chorus again But did y'all catch that line? That line there. So this is so this literally this is like a Stan song. He is Tom McDonald is clearly a Stan saying that because of you I didn't commit suicide. And you know some people will cringe at that because again of the of the of the context of who he is and 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 who he is uh, you know referring to. Uh, but you know but they would applaud that if it was somebody of a of a different identity if it was a black artist or a woman artist or a queer transgender artist like i said you know i do think that people white people who come from these disenfranchised positions um you know they they should you know what i'm saying have their voices heard and they should be um it should be something that everybody recognizes that there are plenty of just because i i hate this super woke progressive perspective that like somebody white oh you're automatically have these privileges so therefore we have to treat we're going to treat you a certain way or you're 
not allowed to express certain opinions or welcome in certain spaces. I'm not with that. But the thing that does bother me is, again, about what you take in stride and about the context of who they are and how they interpret things. Eminem doesn't slide into self-victimization. He understands what, what the culture is, what the conversations are, and why people react a certain way when they see him or hear him. Tom McDonald, and that he, and that he never tried to play up being black, he always was just like, I'm a white guy. This is what I am. I'm trailer park trash, but, um, but I love this culture. I want to get good at this. I respect it. I respect people, you know, saying of this background. And I understand, you know, for all the shit that I've been through that y'all are going through so much more. And I just see myself represented through this, through this, uh, through this art form that y'all created. And I want to participate. And he came and, you know what I'm saying? And he's, you know, where he remains to this day, one of the pillars of, of hip hop in many respects. And he deserves that credit. Tom is just slides into self-victimization and yet yeah, again for all the annoying woke and progressive and liberal people that are out there you can still call out the annoying people and recognize the fact that your the shit that you've gone through exists in a different context than the shit that black people have gone through or other you know or just non-white people go through in addition to the socioeconomic uh, shit there's the political you know, there's the political suppression, there's the media uh, suppression, there's the, you know, and then, and then there's the cultural, you know, saying suppression. You know, he is extremely successful and not even, you know, all that good. I mean, yeah, he's got a, a flow. He doesn't stumble over his words. It's not too, you know, it's, it's decent sounding, but it's nothing really extraordinary. And really the sound is like 15, 20 years behind. It's very much of that. Uh, it's very much of the underground aesthetic, you know, um, for that time, very much 2000s underground aesthetic. But that line, specifically that line of, you showed me I didn't have to be blacker. Eminem never became blacker. So again, this is where he uses these superficial comparisons. They'd be like, we're just like one another. I am you. And it's like, no, you're one of his stands. You're one of his stands. You have an unhealthy obsession with his persona, with his music, and see yourself, rep and, and that you exercise, you act on this shit in the very worst, most toxic ways. And it's fucked up that he's not fucked up, but I mean, it just really represents of, of, of the divide in the culture and just how prominent these views are that, as was said in the article, he has made, I'm sure he's made millions of dollars, if not easily hundreds of thousands of dollars, because he spent a hundred grand on this damn beat. You know what I'm saying? But we're, we will watch a little bit more Tom McDonald, because I do want to go a little bit deeper into, into showing people who the hell he is. Oh, wow. He's got another video with Nova Rockefeller, Tom McDonald. Okay, so let's look at this one from three months ago called Fake Woke, right? Did you know that the average adult has five to 20 pounds of toxic poop in their body at any given moment? Seems crazy, right? I think it's crazy I'm the one who they labeled as controversial and Cardi B is the role model for 12 year old girls. There's rappers pushing Xanax at the top of the billboard, but if I mention race in a song, I'm scared I'll get killed for it. It's okay, so. So, um, oh, Cardi B's an idol. We got rappers talking about pills, topping the charts and everything. Now, listen, uh, I, you know, saying there, you, you can, everybody's allowed to have, you know, voice their opinions, but, you know, also talking about, you know, you know, what images and what influences there are, you know, saying to children and teenagers, because we can all act like we can all sit here and pretend like, oh, this is supposed to be for adults and, and you're not supposed to let your kids watch that, blah, blah, blah. All, every single one of us has either come into contact not and not and not because of any not, it may not even be any fault of our parents right but you know your parents can't literally watch over your shoulder 24 7 you especially today when you have your own smartphones and shit so even if they're watching you know there could be stuff coded in a way that that they won't pick up on right but you know talking about again about like what specific influences do we promote do we platform and you know which ones do we try to you know saying try to suppress you know you know, I can definitely understand the opinion that, hey, you know, Cardi B doesn't necessarily represent the best, you know, saying traits that we want to uh, uh, teach the young girls. Um, you know, same thing with these rappers, a lot of these men, you know, talking about, you know, how they, you know, how they talk about women, how they talk about drug use and, you know, materialism and all that good stuff. And and I do think that there's a valid opinion on that shit and which voices, again, get get promoted. But I don't know exactly what his politics are. I don't know if he's a MAGA supporter, if he's a Trump support, if he was a Trump supporter. But 
you know, saying so he uses those very specific examples of like Cardi B and the other rappers topping the charts and shit. But like, oh, but if I talk about race, I'm scared I'll get killed for it. I'm sorry. Show me one white person, especially a white entertainer, prominent white figure in society that has gotten killed, let alone even attacked out in public for expressing their opinions about race and politics and culture. Again, this white, this white aggrievement, this white victimhood. Is that, do you, is that, yeah, are there instances of people being shut down or suppressed just because they're white or having an opinion that goes against the, uh, you know, prevailing woke or progressive uh, wave that we see in different platforms and different, uh, different spaces? Yes, sure. But I don't know of any, and I'm sure there are people who've made, you know, threats against him saying, I'll whoop your ass or we'll fuck you up, we'll kill you and all this shit, right? We'll dox you and all that shit. And, I'm sh and I have no doubt that that shit has happened. But I have not heard of any attempts on his life as of yet and i and or anybody in a similar position on the other hand i've seen left-wing and progressive journalists and activists and politicians um people of all different backgrounds either because of their identity or because of the values that they express um being targeted in broad daylight and literal plots to like kidnap uh, political officials or you know saying people being you know saying activists being doxxed and again some of the stuff as far as stuff like doxing and harassment and, and death threats people across the spectrum get that shit but if you want to count the victims and those who are literally censored and thrown in jail and whatnot i mean it is 10 to 1 you know what i'm saying um uh, you know, saying liberals or progressives or, you know, woke people or social justice warriors who suffer those consequences uh, more so than conservatives or right wingers, especially white ones, because the, that's that's literally what this country was founded for. It was founded for them. So it makes sense that those voices would be uh, protected, no matter how much they may go against certain other cultural trends within uh, the grand scheme of society. The one who they labeled as controversial and Cardi B is the role model for 12 year old girls. There's rappers pushing Xanax at the top of the billboard. But if I mention race in a song, I'm scared I'll get killed for it. It's backwards. It's getting exponentially dumb. It's more difficult to get a job than purchase a gun. Eminem used to gay bash. Billboard, but if I mention race in a song, I'm scared I'll get killed for it. It's backwards. It's getting exponentially dumb. It's more difficult to get a job than purchase a gun. Okay, so. It's backwards. Is he implying is he implying that what Cardi B and the rappers who talk about these things, these cultural norms, which he doesn't identify with, that he doesn't like, that that he sees as contradictory, that they should be targeted and what sh threatened to be killed? I'm sh they also get plenty of death threats from motherfuckers. Especially when we talk about male rappers, all, half the goddamn time these niggas are just making threats to one another and, and oftentimes uh, acting on the shit. You know, hell, Cardi B has had her own scraps, but the women, they tend to not, you know, saying um, glorify the violence too much as much because they, they, you know, they already live with a certain amount of threat um, over their livelihoods from men in general. And also women just aren't, you know, they understand the consequences of like of that shit better. You know, they're not as hot headed and, and uh, well, I shouldn't say women aren't as hot headed, but l let's just call it what it is. A lot of men, uh, you know, commit more like fatal accident or fatal acts of, of violence. So so there's that part. But then the other side is it's easier to get a gun. Excuse me. It's harder to get a job than it is to get a gun. Homie, if, if this is probably one of the most woke or progressive things that he's ever said, because if that's your concern, then yeah, we should be talking about the decimation of labor unions. Let's talk about the fact that the minimum wage, you know what I'm saying, has been stagnant for generations federally and the corporate, um, in the public and private sphere, right? Um, let's talk about, let's talk about the right to work, you know what I'm saying, legislations, which is the complete opposite of what it sta uh, uh, stands for, you know, and that employers can fire employees with uh, no warnings, with, with no good reason. They can do it on a whim. So let's talk about that shit. That has nothing to do with the trend of, of at least not any left wing, you know what I'm saying, activism or social justice shit. This is, that's all uh, right wing stuff. This is all, ca that's capitalist reactionary shit. You know, you should be talking about all the, all the politicians and media figures and cultural figures and corporate interests and shit whom um, are preventing people from being able, or making it harder for people to get jobs and you know, why it is so easy to get guns and maybe talk about some gun legislation, you know, so fake woke, this nigga, like he, this, this nigga again, <laughs> Tom McDonald is, is not going to be bestowed with that title. He does not deserve it. This man himself is being fake woke and thinking that he is calling out fake wokeness. Two wrongs don't make a right, baby. 
Eminem used to gay bash and murder his mom And now he doesn't want fans if they voted for Trump We're ashamed to be American You should probably love it Cause you have the right to hate it And not get stoned to death in public it's Okay, so... Who's trying to stone you? Who's trying to kill you? Again, this this victimization. You know, he is calling back on Eminem's, you know, you know, his past in that, yeah, he used to say, like I said before, he said a lot of vulgar things. Um, you know, he's done some fucked up things. Uh, nothing to the extent like he describes like, you know, either sexual assault or like literally killing his mother and shit like that. But as far as like addiction and certain acts of violence and, you know, just the way he, the energy that he would, you know, saying give to certain people, people can change, people can grow. And again, even, you know, even as he remains, uh, you know, kind of vulgar and and crass in his raps and his music to this day, he does. He's toned it down quite a bit. But that also he his his values and shit were never expressed through like white aggrievement. He's never had that. If anything, he's always taken ownership of why his life is fucked up or why he's so angry and, and shit like that. And being like, this is just how I am. I'm a troll. Sometimes some shit just rubs me the wrong way. I'm also ignorant. You know, saying I dropped out of high school, trailer park trash, all that stuff. So he takes ownership of the shit. He doesn't just pin it on society and culture, you know, saying while still being able to call out their bullshit on occasion, you know? Yeah. So if he doesn't want fans, people will vote for Trump. I mean, yeah, good for him. He doesn't need the money or support, but it's like, yeah, people can change. But as far as like, oh, being grateful for it, that's his freedom to do that. Just as like, it's your freedom to say this shit. You know, you can't complain about other people complaining and then bring and then talk about when to invoke free speech. It's like, shut the fuck up. It's like you're you're just you're guilty of the same crime that you're accusing others of. Be grateful because you can do this shit. And there are plenty of people in the who served in the armed services, armed forces, and they may disrespect the military and shit. And they'll be like, you know, but it's like, hey, that's their right to do that shit. That that's literally what they went and fought for. It's literally that. Children, we were taught how to walk and talk, but the system wants adults to sit down and shut up. Cancel culture runs the world now, the planet went crazy. Label everything we say as homophobic or racist. If you're white, then you're privileged, guilty by association. All our childhood heroes got me too, or they're rapists. They okay. <laughs> Again, see, this is when, this is when, um, so, you know, self snitching is a tried and true trend, especially in a lot of rap now. It, you know, motherfuckers whom are blatantly telling on themselves. Now, this is a little bit more dry snitching. Tom says that, you know, cancel culture runs the world and shit. We're being targeted, blah, blah, blah. They want adults to sit down and shut up, even though his kids were taught to stand and walk. Yeah. Just like you get taught that there's certain things you can't say or shouldn't say to certain people or that you should expect certain, you know, reactions. But more importantly, saying that the Me Too movement, oh, all of our heroes are either either all of our heroes have been me too or they're rapists and that oh and that whiteness is invoking you know that whiteness is uh you're guilty by association now again are there some people who use whiteness as this catch-all as a frame it as an, an original sin yeah absolutely and i don't believe in that i don't believe whiteness is an original sin and that you know if we're going to really take inter uh, intersectionality seriously and actually understand it understand that there's a spectrum of experiences then you have to come to grips with the fact that there are plenty of white people whom are, you know, they're not privileged. They, they were not cut in on those associated privileges. Uh, well, most of them anyway. Yeah, they have the benefit of being perceived as white. And so treated a different way by police, treated a certain way during job interviews, when they, you know, act out on certain, you know, emotions of whatnot, it's interpreted differently. So, yes, yeah, so those privileges, you know, still remain. But depending on the situation that, you know, the place where you're at, that could be different. Uh, the spaces you want to operate in, like, you know, a white person trying to be in hip hop, operating the hip hop sphere and rap. You know, but him saying like, oh, everything we say is either racist or sexist. He is not specifically going to tell you the things that he's been accused of for being racist or sexist. All he can do is complain and invoke the victimhood because then if he actually actually give you details, he'll end up snitching on himself. But again, but what's actually more telling and back to the whole Me Too element is he's telling on himself because very few people have gotten canceled unless there were legal uh, unless there were legal consequences that came along with it. Because anybody, because basically canceling, you know, really just comes down to a certain number of people who disagree with you and voice their opinions and show that, yeah, we all disagree with you. But a lot of the shit doesn't end up going um, anywhere. You know, sometimes it does get a lot more traction. It's, shit happens that we don't know about that doesn't get promoted in the, in, the, in the media and everything. There are times when cancelings happen to the wrong people. Absolutely. But in terms, but for the most part, 
especially when it comes to people who have uh, status and have wealth and have connections, unless they did something that was illegal and all you had dependent on is that, oh, some celebrity, some entitled, some you know rich person was being entitled and being a dick. That's basically all of them. They're not going to go and destroy their, you know, saying just keep attacking their own kind because they're guilty. Most of them are guilty of the same shit. The reason why the same reason why most politicians don't call out other politicians about their or they only go so far in calling out their greed or their corruption and whatnot, because they know if the hammer really fell, it would catch their ass as well in the cross in the in the crossfire. But Tom is really telling on himself that, look, all the heroes I had, they all got me too me too was specifically centered around those who were you know who who were like rapists or committed sexual assault or tried to coerce people into shit harvey weinstein r kelly bill pill cosby um you know saying as, as well as a um you know saying so many others so it's this type of shit that 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 really shows you that he is a right-wing kind of reactionary white identity based uh, or white aggrieved white victim um, you know, same type of dude. And that's the, and he's trying to do it under the, not under, but using the aesthetic of underground hip hop and outdated aesthetic of underground hip hop. And it's found a lot of success. White and your privilege, guilty by association. All our childhood heroes got me too to the rapist. They never freed the slaves. They realized that they don't need the chains. They gave us tiny screens. We think we free because we can't see the cage. They knew that race war would be the game they need to play for people to big teams. They use the media to feed the flame. Okay, so we got a lot in there that they didn't never free the slaves. Black person here, black American, black Yankee. Uh, yeah, the slaves were definitely freed. Uh, wasn't really all that long ago, but yeah, but they were definitely freed. However, if you want to talk about, say, the prison industrial complex and how that is still uh, being used to target uh, communities of color, especially black people, but just in, and then also just impoverished people, uh, lower class people in general, you know, saying you could say that that, yes, and using that for free labor, cheap labor, um, you could say that that's an analogy for slavery, but the uh, peculiar institution, as it was referred to euphemistically, no, is you know no longer legally permitted. There's no longer legal slavery. And as far as this whole thing about like, oh, um, they gave us phones, you know, seem to distract us. You know, it's like smartphones and the internet and you know social media were all of these things that came together for different reasons by different actors and saying had different you know saying results that people did not anticipate you know saying hell uh, the, the smartphone itself the internet excuse me was just a way initially for military uh, personnel to be able to communicate with one another in a safe secure and and efficient way and now it's become you know saying the platform of the space in which um you know so much of our lives uh, happens but you know so it's like that part is cheesy but they realized that they don't need the chains. They gave us tiny screens. We think we free because we can't see the cage. They knew that race war would be the game they need to play for people to big teams. They use the media to feed the flame. OK, so, yeah, so the uh, they knew they had to pick the race war. No, no race. I don't know if he knows the history of this fucking country, but it was built explicitly on the perceived um, superiority of white Western Europeans. And they acted on that. Uh, you know, that's what the policy of that's what, you know, literally slavery was you know enacted for the genocide of indigenous peoples and whatnot. And, um, you know, colonization of so many other countries, you know, whether it was, you know, through hard power boots on the grounds or through soft power, through culture and, and trade and everything. And that jump from, oh, they gave us, they gave us smartphones. I mean, which you could say, what is that? The government is that, uh, you know, you're talking about the government corporations. It's like, okay. And then, okay. And they knew to talk about the race war. I mean, the race war um, is not talked about by anybody in the left wing, liberal progressive spaces. The race war is only talked about exclusively by the right wing. And it's also go hand. It also goes hand in hand with the with the um, white replacement theory. And I wonder if he's actually going to bring that up. So let's actually go a little bit further and see where he goes with this, because, again, like the whole white identity extremist shit, he definitely seems to be invoking that uh, because only right wing reactionary white you know, identity extremists talk about uh, an impending race war and saying that everybody else is talking about it when they're the only ones that actually brought it up. We're talking about. Uh, bigotry. We're talking about racism. We're talking about people being um, who are not of the pri you know perceived privileged class, i.e., white people, um, are mistreated on the basis of their identity, especially black folks. <laughs> 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 
Fake woke, fake woke, same old safe zone. <laughs> so this is hilarious. So so again, we have another hook, another you know hook that's in an aesthetic that's like 10, 15 years ago, even though there's still plenty of underground rappers who use this shit. Fake woke, fake woke, same old safe zones. It, it really kind of contradicts the shit that he was saying in that because he's always he's always invoking that like oh things used to be different things were better when you could talk freely you could express yourself in certain ways and how certain people like Eminem have changed right and then he's saying it's same old same old safe zones or maybe he's just saying that like the saturation like the safe zones are everywhere now I, I'll, I'll give him that right but um th that's fucking corny that's hilarious but then he also uses a you know term that's gotten really popular because of a certain figure facts don't care about your feelings uh, from Ben Shapiro this is hilarious so it's like aesthetically it's cringe but also the message that he's promoting again fits hand in glove with all of this white aggrievement you know talking about you know hating the cancel culture uh you we can't express ourselves anymore there's certain you know voices that are propped up and they're fake they're contrarians or they seriously they uh they contradict themselves he's just a whiny little fucking brat you know it's like he won't even talk about real instances in his life when he's been misinterpreted or you know, saying being treated, you know, saying in a, in a terrible way for no good reason. Everything is about like, I said this and all these people are getting mad. It's like, okay, but what did he say? And what was specifically were the criticisms? Because anybody can just say like, oh, you know, somebody called me racist and shit. And all I did was say that like, you know, the certain people are inferior to me. And it's like, yeah, that's fucking racist. Oh my God, there we go. Safe zone, say or same old, safe zones, fake woke. It's like, but then you won't be mad when I see, you know, saying with somebody else that says that white people are evil. It's like, yeah, well, some white people are evil. Um, you know, yeah, there's some assholes who think all white people literally are evil, but what, how many white people are being killed in the street or being, um, you know what I'm saying, unjustly losing their jobs for no goddamn reason? I'm sure there are some happening, but he's not going to talk about any of that shit. See all these people screaming facts, but they fake woke. Hate their neighbor because he wears a mask or he stays home. Has a daughter, but his favorite artist. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hating people because they wear a mask or stay or excuse me, stay home. That's a criticism of anti-maskers. That's a criticism of right wing reactionaries and Christians, right, you know, white evangelical Christians and shit, whom funny enough are the ones whom show the most hesitancy in taking the science and the guidelines uh, from like the CDC or other health officials seriously from wearing the mask and stuff or self-isolating, quarantining, getting tested for COVID and even, you know, professing that they're going to get the vaccine. Hell, the latest COVID conspiracy theory that I just seen. So very inconsistent and aesthetic. And let's take a look at this picture real quick. This aesthetic, like, you know, the face, all the face tattoos and shake, you know, a lot of them are super ugly. Um, you know, the piercings, the grill, uh, you know, the braids, the streetwear. Um, you know, since he's got the aesthetic down, right? He's been studied. He's a student of this shit. He's a student of hip hop and he's definitely carving out his own lane, taking up his own space that has become, you know, saying super stands. And the reason why I like focusing on certain people like this isn't to simply cringe at the shit and just be like, well, actually it's understanding how, just how deep the spectrum goes and just how many different degrees there are. And that there's a spectrum across the, there's a spectrum across the board. A lot of people want to just talk about a spectrum pertaining to nuances of their own ideals or people in the same sphere and not allowing others to be viewed in such a complex way. There's complexity here. It's superficial to me because I'm well acquainted with all this shit, but to others who aren't well acquainted, who aren't as, as literate in all this shit and all these different terms and the different contexts and examples, I can see why this shit is super captivating, why they would buy into it. It's understanding, it's, it's good to be able to understand this shit so that we, when we engage with others who are like this, we're not just being like, oh, you like this shit, it's stupid. It's being able to break it down a little bit further, maybe change their minds or at least give them something that they to, uh, to think about. So that when they look at him again, listen to him again, they won't take him as seriously. Said he slays hoes, picks her up from school, music slaps on the way home. Censorship's an issue because they choose what they erase. There's a the difference between hate speech and speech that you hate. I think Black Lives Matter was the stupidest name when the system's screwing everyone exactly the same. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Let's run that back real quick. Censorship's an issue because they choose what they erase. There's the difference between hate speech and speech that you hate. I think Black Lives Matter was the stupidest name when the system's screwing everyone exactly the same. So I don't know who came up with that quote. I don't, I don't, I highly doubt he came up with it. There's a difference between free speech and speech that you hate. 
Yes, it's very true. And it's something that you, it's really hard to disagree with. But then you have to ask about specifics. Well, Tom gave you a very specific one. Oh, Black Lives Matter is the stupidest name. So it's a way to be able to not say, oh, Black Lives Matter itself is dumb, but that the, oh, everybody's getting screwed the same, which implies what? All lives matter. And all lives matter while not being promoted by the, um, not gaining the same coverage as Black Lives Matter. One reason is because of the demonization of black activism. So of course it was going to get naturally more attention, but all lives matter is something that was espoused by uh, prominent political figures, including Trump at the time when he was president, as well as many other politicians. And still to this day, police officers, I think I said that already, different people um, uh, in business, uh, regular citizens all across the board. So there's no shortage of people who believe uh, all lives matter and want to try to use it to say like, oh, you know, the implication being that, oh, we're all experiencing this shit the same. No, we are not. No, we are not. Because all you got to do is look at something like arrest records, right? And show that, or uh, drug use, right? That dr black people and white people use drugs at around the same rate. And black people are only around 13, 14% of the population and white people are still over, uh, I think like three quarters, right? Of the population. So if you were to say, so, but why are there more black people arrested? Not just per capita, but overall. So that right there is evident. And then you can break it down further about like why certain, um, why Latin communities, why the Latin community, they get it worse than white people, but because they also get fucked over in other ways concerning like immigration and shit like that and not being able to take advantage of certain, um, uh, you know, benefits like social security and, and, and other types of programs, right? And, uh, you know, welfare and everything. So, you know, which a poor person, uh, a white person in America, um, they represent the most welfare kings and queens. There's more white people on uh especially in red states and 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 you know saying like you know the middle of the country and and you know backwater places i think that's a derogatory term i don't you know i shouldn't use that but you know so to talk about like oh everybody's getting treated equally no and then using that to try to say that oh black lives matter is stupid without directly saying all lives matter shows me exactly where this dude is coming from i just want to spend thanksgiving day with food and my family without being accused of celebrating native casualties. We got so divided, it's black and white and political. Republicans are bigots, libtards if you're liberal. There's riots in the day with food in my family without being accused of celebrating native casualties. I mean, you can still do that. Um, you can call it Thanksgiving if you want to. You don't have to tell anybody. And as far as people saying like, oh, without having to talk about native casualties, yeah, again, that shit can get obnoxious, but you can also just ignore it. So divided, it's black and white and political. That's <laughs> black and white and political. No, politics affects all of us. And some people center their whole politics around, say, being superior um, and more deserving of rights and privileges and wealth and access uh, to different things than other groups of people. And they vote on those lines. You know, and it's like, yeah, it happens across the across the board. But you have to ask about what the intent is and what the context is of those whom are participating in this shit. Um, black lives matter is not never said that like, oh, only black people matter. It's that we're suffering. We, we experience certain things disproportionate to our populations, you know what I'm saying? Cause if you want to just look at stuff per capita about the population we represent, it's not enough to be like, oh, why are they arrested for this amount of crime? It's like, why, why are our neighborhoods so policed? Why is it so many people are arrested over possessing certain drugs or using certain drugs when there's just as many people of other groups who use those things and traffic them. And, and even when they get caught, or abuse, abuse themselves, abuse others, they get uh, slaps on the wrist. They get to go to rehab. They get, but if you're of the wrong color, if you're the wrong person, then it's like, oh, you're just a, um, you know, saying, hell, like the opioid crisis. Part of that, part of that has uh, came about because black people were not seen to as be experiencing pain as much as white people. And so they didn't need to be prescribed those drugs. It, and, it, and the way that those drugs were pushed in these communities um, as a way of not actually giving people, you know, real treatment and therapy and everything is that it inadvertently created a white centered uh, opioid crisis. Well, why it's called the drug crisis now, whereas before it was called the crack epidemic and shit. Republicans are bigots, libtards if you're liberal. There's riots in our streets and it's just getting worse. Y'all screaming deep on the police. Y'all are genius for sure. They're underfunded already. They're way too busy to work. Order food and call the cops. See what reaches you first. Okay, so... <laughs> Again, he, he in, in this whole thing about calling out fake woke people or calling out the libtards and left wing and progressive people, he's inadvertently defending our points that why is it 
that if I order fast food, it's more likely to come to than the cops because the cops don't want to come to certain neighborhoods because um, they have, you know, on one hand, it's like, yeah, sometimes they have a priority list and they may have to deal with certain issues. But more also more, but more often, they don't want to go to certain neighborhoods because they're biased against, they're bigoted against certain people. They don't care if, if another black person kills another black person or overdoses and shit. It's like, just go, you know, just call them in to go and uh, pick up the bodies and shit. And, and anytime they come to the neighborhoods, they're, because we're so demonized, they're always prepared to just pull out their guns and just expect all of us to be, um, you know, acting out of violence. When more cops are killed and targeted by white people in general, especially these white extremist uh, movements. Hell, we just saw the demonstration at the Capitol on January 6th, which happened within the time span of this video dropping. And I, I don't even care if he's going to mention that shit, because I don't want to listen to much more of this motherfucker. <laughs> But let's run that back real quick. Already, they're way too busy to work. Order food and call the cops. See what reaches you first. Yeah, and so this is not a defense of funding the police. If anything, it should be like, yeah, we need other services uh, to be provided because the police are obviously inadequate and they already receive a disproportionate amount of our budget. In some, in some, in, in many districts, in many places, stuff like public utilities or education and parks and recreation or you know pension plans for other people will be sacrificed and compromised in order to give police more funds. They already they have so much. They have more than they absolutely need. And they have for decades, especially with the ability for them to be able to militarize their, their operations and justify these bloated budgets. There's no reason for them to have like all these tanks and they have like, um, you know, all this gear that you would need if you was invading another country blindly. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. So, so no, Tom is a right wing reactionary. He's using all the talking points. It's clear what he stands for. Segregation ended. That's a lie in itself. That was a strategy to make us think they were trying to help. They knew that racism was hot if they designed it to sell. We buy up every single box and divide us ourselves. Wait, what? What? Racism was hot if they designed it to sell. We buy up every single box and divide us ourselves. They so fake woke. Facts don't care about feelings. They know they won't tell me what to believe in. They so fake woke. Same old, same old. They so fake woke. Facts don't care about your feelings. Use violence to get peace and wonder why it isn't working. That's like sleeping with a football team to try and be a virgin. Politicians are for sale and someone always makes the purchase. But you and I cannot afford it. Our democracy is worthless. If okay, so, oh yeah, violence doesn't work um, to get results. Uh, actually, I beg to differ. It was only because of certain protests and because, uh, you know, millions of us had to rise up and say some shit that certain police officers got in charge, that certain corporate figures were taken down, that certain people were kicked out of different companies. Um, not that always violence in and of itself is the answer, but no, sometimes violence has definitely uh, gotten some, you know, gotten plenty of things done. And it only happened because uh, trying to do things the peaceful way, trying to do things the bureaucratic way, trying to do things through the, through the you know, commonly accepted uh, behaviors in society, the norms of society, was not working. Um, trying to sleep with a football team to be a virgin. And that's like sleeping with a football team to try and be a virgin. Politicians are for sale and someone always makes the purchase. But you and I cannot afford it. Our democracy is worthless. If okay, so who can afford it? So who can afford it? So who then, if the implication here is that our politicians are bought off, who's buying them? I wonder who he's, I wonder who he's gonna, I wonder if he's gonna break that down or if it's just gonna leave that as an open-ended question and you have to fill in the blanks. But because of who he is at this point, who is established, who he is, and also what he said throughout this song, he's implying that it is not simply corporations, but that, and not, and not simply corporations and the media and whatnot, but that it is specifically left-wing, liberal, progressive uh, corporations who are trying to stuff identity politics and sell you um, all of this rage, outrage porn and whatnot, and social justice, and that it's been the plan all along. It's part of a grand scheme. Man has mental illness, call him crazy, say it silently. When country's going crazy, we accept it as society. Get sick and take a pill when the side effects get you high. You get addicted like these rappers dying, fighting with sobriety. Censoring the facts turns our children into idiots. They claim it's for our safety. I'll tell you what it really is. Removing information that empowers all the citizens. The truth doesn't damage points of view that are legitimate. They're trying to change. Okay. And, and again, he's very sure. He's very good. Very, he's, he's got plenty of rage. 
but no substance. There's no details here on specifically what facts are being censored. What things do citizens need to know? If we're just referring to the things that he's state, said throughout the statement that like, oh, our co um, corporations are trying to sell you uh, these little black boxes, these little phones and, and media devices, and that, and that our, 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 uh, our democracy is corrupted because all our, our politicians are bought off. But he doesn't tell you who is buying them off or who's really pulling the strings. But because of the context, because of the, what he's, you know, the image and everything, he's basically saying that it's because of the woke. It's because of the lefties, it's because of the liberals, because of the social justice warriors, the woke activists, the woke scolds. And the thing, again, that I really don't like about this is that, like, there are plenty of left wing people, liberal people whom agree with the sentiment that, oh, they don't like a lot of the identity politics because they themselves still kind of harbor uh, inhibitions about, like, engaging with that stuff. They don't really care about it. They don't want to understand it. But, you know, what I'm saying they do look at their paychecks. They understand the the economic situation, and they also see that the that the, which way the wind is blowing, and so they'll play, they'll speak to these identity politics and social justice shit without actually committing to it and saying that like, hey, we should actually like try to abandon this or tone this stuff down, and that like, oh, you know, it's holding us back. We should be trying to meet them in the middle and drop identity politics. Fuck that. Fuck all that shit. So it's a lot of innuendo. You know, saying he's a good job. He's a good propagandist. Again, like Charleston White and a lot of other uh, people, he is good at being able to give you bits and facts here, but leave them open ended. And that because of the context of other things they've said and other things that they say, you know, like throughout, you know, something like this particular song and other you know, bits of media is you fill in the blanks. It's like Mad Libs. It's like, I'm going to say this and that. And you fill in the blank on who the actors are, what the situation is or what specifically I'm talking about. That's his whole angle. That's the whole game. Amen to amen and women. How do we let them make praying a microaggression? Instead of asking God for the strength to keep winning, we cheat to get ahead and then we ask him for forgiveness. Feminism used to be the most righteous of fights, but these days it feels like they secretly hate guys. I don't trust anyone who bleeds for a week and don't die. I'm just kidding. But everything else that I said is right. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. So using that old misogynistic joke, I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. Ha, 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 ha. You know, that shit. Oh, I'm just kidding. But everything else I said was right. Feminists used to be good until it got taken over by all these, um, these third wave feminists. And it's like, yeah, again, there are some obnoxious motherfuckers. And he uses the example of like, oh, a men and a women. And you could be said that's corny. I do think that's kind of corny. You know, I think that is definitely an example of shit being taken too far. But it's just something you just kind of like you cringe at and you just kind of go, that's goofy. Uh, why does that need to be done? But but then using that to completely degrade the movement of feminism and saying that, like, oh, it's completely lost its course. Um, you know, they just I feel like they just hate men and shit when it's like, are there some feminists who just hate men? Are there some fe fe is feminazi a real thing? Absolutely. That's, that's absolutely a real fucking thing. But yeah, he's 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 fairly I would say that he's lost, but he's not lost. He's interpreted the shit and seen the scope of things and 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 see which way the wind is blowing and is like, you know what? I fit into this domain, I fit into that domain, I don't fit into these other ones, and he's just riding the wave. But this is the danger of this shit again, and it's of why like, yeah, we cringe at it on one hand, but on the other side it's like people who pick this shit up, there's <laughs> as much as I've moved on from music and as far as like taking substantial worldviews and elements about like my uh, looking at myself and really internalizing them, I've moved on from sourcing that stuff from media and especially music. But there's always going to be a generation of people who see themselves represented in this shit and that this is the this is the place, the vector in which they develop a lot of their outlook on the world and their outlook on themselves and, and society at large. And so that's why it's such a fucking problem that he doesn't give you any details, any specifics. He's giving you Mad Libs. And it's and it's and it's done in a way that's very contemporary. Well, contemporary for certain audiences, and is basically all alluding to all alluding to um, the backlash to social justice, the backlash to feminism, the backlash to civil rights movements, a backlash to uh, any type of social activism, a backlash to uh, corporations and the media and the government um, being moved by these social and cultural trends. And having to, you know, so bend to those whims and everything and, and only and like, yeah, still giving a lot of mouth service, uh, but at the end, still having to provide certain results or facing rebuke. He can't do that. He can only see that in one direction um, because he is an aggrieved white person. He probably believes in the white replacement theory. You can't speak of as a white straight man shit. 
And it's like, yeah, there are some motherfuckers who make it really hard to exist like that and that I think are just impugning white people as if whiteness itself is an original sin and throwing around, oh, your privilege, you know, a little too often. But beyond that, it's like, dude, you're just, you're purposefully, you're purposefully misrepresenting the shit. You're purposefully playing dumb. And I feel like he's a lot smarter than he, than he comes off. But he knows the things that he can and can't say out loud. That's Tom McDonald. Uh, I think like Charleston White, he might be a reoccurring character that we go back on uh, throughout this, you know, different series and everything. But that's it. Sandboy Reacts, uh, Tom McDonald. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.